Bye bye. It's a laugh, a smile, a hug, a kiss. Let Werther's Original Caramels make you feel like someone very special. A little piece of bliss. First, I just want to say happening now. Reduced charges against a woman involved in a 2018 murder and robbery at a Northwest Side hotel. The unusual apology to the defendant in court from someone you might not expect. I beg of you, put yourself in my position. An emotional plea for the mother of Cameron Prescott, the six-year-old who was shot and killed by Bear County deputies back in December of 2017. More on her continued fight for justice. The president back at the White House recovering from COVID-19 and also hoping to use this as a political advantage. I'm Daryl Forges in Washington at the very latest. Frozen meals are hot, as in popular. Coming up, which ones are not only good, but are good for you. Another quiet day across South Texas. The big weather story is major hurricane Delta moving into the Gulf of Mexico. All of the latest information on it and its newest projected path coming right up. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, an emotional apology to a woman who had just been sentenced to 20 years in prison for her role in a murder and robbery. Uh, Paul Venema with that surprising apology that came during the woman's sentencing hearing. The hearing began with a denial from the defendant. No, I did not pull that trigger. 20-year-old Blandine in Dumbo is talking about a fatal shooting that occurred at a Northside motel in 2018. She and 20-year-old Tariq Mike were at the motel planning a car theft and parts chopping scheme with another couple, according to police. The plan went bad, they say, and Mike shot 25-year-old Robert Patterson to death. He's standing uh, over Robert for about three, four seconds, and that's when two shots went off. And Robert didn't move at all. She said Mike also shot and seriously wounded Patterson's girlfriend. They then fled in the girlfriend's car. I was in shock because somebody who I thought was a friend to me, I never thought that he would just mercilessly execute. Two people. They were later arrested and charged with capital murder. Mike pled guilty to a reduced charge of murder and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Ndumbo was charged with aggravated robbery. It is the order of the court that you be sentenced to 20 years confinement. During the hearing, Ndumbo's mother with an apology that brought her daughter to tears. I'm sorry I failed you. Looking back now that I'm not really into grieving, I feel like I could have done, I could have done more for you. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. I'm not a hateful person, but I want justice for my son, and he deserves that, and so does my family. That the mother of Cameron Prescott, a six-year-old boy who was shot and killed by Bear County Sheriff's deputies in 2017. Ruby Prescott spoke to Commissioner's Court today about her continued fight for justice. Cameron Prescott was hit by a stray bullet back in 2017 as BCSO was in pursuit of Amanda Jones. Jones, wanted for car theft and led deputies on a foot chase, but ended up in the front of Cameron's home. A lawsuit filed late last year states that Jones went into the home and told Cameron's father, quote, you have kids and I do not want trouble, end quote. The lawsuit states before she turned to walk out the front door, she was shot by deputies. Some of those rounds went through the side of the home, striking Cameron and killing him. Ruby Prescott speaking about the status of that lawsuit today. There was an offer made. Come on, guys. Yeah. That offer was a joke. Uh. And to feel like you guys or whoever made the decision feel that my son's life was just worth that much. Specifics of that offer were not discussed today. Judge Nelson Wolf did agree to a briefing on the status of the case during the next executive session. A 22 year old man now facing a charge of attempted capital murder of a police officer. Adrian Octavio Cardenas is accused of running from officers during a traffic stop last night, not far from South Park Mall. Police say while trying to get away, Cardenas hid behind a telephone pole and bushes and fired a shot at an officer who was chasing. They say the officer was hit in the chest, but his body camera stopped the bullet 
from piercing his chest at the story we had on last night on the night beat. Well, according to SAPD, the officer managed to return fire, hitting Cardenas in his arm and abdomen. They say Cardenas then threw the gun into the street and was arrested by a second officer. Case that has requested the body cam footage of the shooting, but have not received a response from SAPD yet. Well, another day in the upper 90s. Actually, a couple of clouds out there, though. That's the difference today. Just a few patchy clouds, especially as you look out over the Alamo City, particularly off to the east. Temperatures right now in the backyards, upper 80s to low 90s. Warren's backyard in Del Rio, 92. 88 in Floresville. 86 in Leon Springs, 91 in West Kerrville, and similar readings elsewhere. 92 Utopia, 87 Seguin, and 88 Universal City. So this evening, just like last evening, clear sky, calm wind, a hint of humidity in the air, especially later tonight. By 10 p.m., we'll be in the mid-70s, and then tomorrow we'll start the day in the 60s. Big updates on major hurricane Delta, where it's going to go and why coming right up. Thank you so much, Adam. Now to the latest on President Trump's recovery at the White House. The president has been going after his Democratic rival Joe Biden on Twitter as both campaigns gear up for a frantic final four weeks before Election Day. Daryl Ford just in Washington with the latest on the president's condition and the 2020 race. Daryl, what do we know right now? Yeah, that's right, Steve and Ursula. Good evening to the both of you. The White House physician released the latest information on the president's condition, saying that his vitals are stable, and right now he's not showing any symptoms. The president also tweeting out earlier about this, saying that he feels great. Now, the president hoping to use his personal battle against COVID-19 as a political advantage. President Donald Trump returning to the White House last night, removing his mask and hoping to turn his COVID-19 diagnosis into a political advantage. The president downplaying the virus in a message to supporters saying, Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. But with just four weeks to go until Election Day and uncertainty about the president's health going forward, Democrats don't think that strategy will work. Former Vice President Joe Biden tweeting a video last night putting on a mask while Trump takes one off. Be afraid for your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter, your neighbor, your co-worker. That's who you're protecting having this mask on. Biden is in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania on Tuesday, delivering a speech that urges Americans to come together. After a whirlwind seven days since Trump and Biden faced off on a debate stage, Wednesday night, all eyes will be on their running mates. Vice President Mike Pence and Senator Kamala Harris will go face to face in Salt Lake City in the first and only vice presidential debate. Pence expected to face some tough questions on the White House's handling of the coronavirus after President Trump, First Lady Melania Trump, and several senior staffers tested positive. I can't wait to take the debate stage against Senator Kamala Harris. As for where the voters stand on this, a new CNN poll puts Biden at a 16-point advantage nationally among likely voters. And when asked which candidate would better handle the coronavirus, Biden holds a 59 to 38 percent edge. Now, also on Twitter, the president says that he is ready to go for the debates in Miami. But the big question is, is it even going to happen? It's just nine days away. And also whether or not the Biden camp will even agree to do it since the president is still recovering from the coronavirus. Live in Washington, Daryl Forges. Steve, back to you. Now, Daryl, before you go, now that the president is back in the White House and back to work, has he made any moves on stimulus negotiations? Are Republicans and Democrats any closer to reaching a deal? Well, Steve, the president also tweeted out about it when it comes to the stimulus deal. He says he's going to stop all the negotiations until after the election. He says that uh, they, offer, they offered the Democrats a, a very generous $1.6 trillion deal, but they did not take it. Mainly the Republicans with Steve Mnuchin have been uh, doing the negotiations with the House Democrats. And as of right now, the president says he does not like what he's seeing. But keep this in mind, Steve. According to the Federal Reserve Chairman, he says that a stimulus deal needs to be passed as soon as possible. And he is warning of a dire and tragic situation economically moving forward if one is not passed soon. Daryl Ford just live in Washington. Appreciate it. Thank you, Daryl. With the voter registration deadline over, the next big step for the November 3rd general election is early voting. It begins in exactly one week from today. This year, this early voting has been extended for a few days due to the pandemic. You can cast your ballot starting on Tuesday, October 13th. 
The early voting period ends Friday, October 30th. Other changes this year, Texans won't be able to vote straight ticket, but you can still individually select each candidate. And if you're voting by mail, you can track your ballot. You can find all this information much more right now on KSAT.com. Election day again, Tuesday, November 3rd. We've got a recall or we want to warn you about Walmart pulling fresh fruit from shelves over a possible listeria contamination. That recall includes the pre-cut packaged fruit sold under the brand Country Fresh. It includes containers of pre-cut apples, grapes, mangoes, pineapples, and cantaloupe. They have Best Buy dates of October 3rd to the 11th. They were sold in nine states, including Texas. No one has gotten sick so far, but if you have these products, you should throw them out. Animal neglect cases are on the rise in San Antonio, and experts believe the reasons are pandemic related. Local experts say because people are at home more often and paying more attention to what's going on in their neighborhoods, they're now noticing more animal neglect and they're reporting it. The other reason has to do with money. Many people are in a financial crisis. They're struggling to give their pets food and shelter. If you're in that situation, there are some free resources you can take advantage of. The San Antonio Food Bank has a pet division. It's called Daisy Cares. And they are solely focused on making sure that folks that are struggling financially and things like that, not only can that family get food for themselves, but they can also get some resources for their animals uh, in, you know, in the, the form of dog food, leashes, different things like that. To apply to receive free resources for your pet, head to the Daisy Cares website where you can find also distribution sites closest to you. And most importantly, if you want to report animal abuse or neglect, call 311. Edgewood ISD and Eagles Flight Advocacy and Outreach coming together to create a one-stop shop for families and youth in need. Today, the grand opening of the Regina Reed Carver Community Resource Center. The center houses a food pantry, clothing closet, baby pantry, and laundry service center all under one roof. So how did the idea come about? Pamela Allen with Eagles Flight says it stems from the Edgewood ISD Police Department's desire to better serve kids in the community. Helping the children be able to go to school and have that education and not be worried about their resources, their clothing, their food. And so with that, we built this. Allen says the center plans to start offering self-defense classes to young girls, teenagers and women who've been through trafficking and domestic violence. By the way, the one stop shop is open to anyone in San Antonio in need of assistance. We have more information on KSAT.com. An update now on the authorization of a COVID-19 vaccine. The Food and Drug Administration now saying it will consider authorization only after it received two months of data, after trial volunteers received the vaccine itself. The measure will make it harder to receive that emergency use authorization by election day. The FDA says the goal, however, is the safety of the vaccine before it's distributed to millions of Americans. Staying home more often through the pandemic can may mean you're cooking more than you ever did before, but if you're getting tired of the same old recipes, up next, we have a few healthy frozen options that can make whipping up dinner easy and guilt-free. But before we go to break, we want to take a moment to remember the life of rock legend Eddie Van Halen. The legendary guitarist lost his battle with cancer. He was just 65 years old. Many of us are cooking more these days, but even the best home chef needs a break now and then. If dining out or taking out isn't your thing or you're in a hurry and you need something fast, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Ward says, look no further than your freezer. It may have some revamped tasty and nutritious frozen meals. Demand for frozen meals is heating up. When it comes to frozen meals, consumers want healthy, less processed ingredients, and manufacturers are delivering on this. And we're seeing bolder flavors in different cuisines. 
Consumer Reports checked out 30 frozen meals you'd find in the grocery stores. What exactly is in them and how much nutritional good stuff are you actually getting? They literally picked at their plates, weighing the veggies, whole grains and beans. Portion sizes could be small, but most had one to one and a half cups of healthy ingredients. Our highest scoring frozen meals were not only tasty, but also had mostly whole food ingredients and were lower in sodium. They found companies are offering plenty of spices and interesting vegetarian options but they scored many of the chicken dishes lower because the chicken was dry or chewy. So if you're looking for a quick frozen meal that's good and is good for you, Consumer Reports has a few suggestions. The unwrapped burrito bowl from Healthy Choice Steamers. It's spicy with a tangy tomatillo sauce. Bird's Eye Steam Fresh Superfood Blends Chickpeas and Spinach is a brown rice and barley dish with veggies dressed in citrus flavors. And Amy's Bowl's Harvest Casserole is a tangy mix of red beans, quinoa, sweet potato, kale, and broccoli. Bon appetit. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, so we continue to watch the golf to see exactly what's going to happen with Delta. Yeah, and that's the uh, big question is exactly where it's going to go. We have a pretty good idea of where it should go as we get toward the end of this week, making landfall along the North Texas coastline. So let's get right to it. Take a look at our sky. It's very quiet. A few patchy clouds east of town, not even detected here on the infrared satellite imagery. But what's obvious and stands out is Hurricane Delta, now major category four hurricane, max sustained winds of 145 with some gusts up to 175. It's still a pretty tightly packed storm. Good thing about that is it contains the highest winds closer to the center of the storm rather than reaching them farther out. However, it should become a little looser as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico and stretch out a little bit more. Either way, moving to the west northwest now 17 miles per hour. We'll take a look at the track and basically anywhere from about Cozumel to Cancun early Tomorrow morning, we are expecting landfall as a category four hurricane. As usual, with interaction with the land, it would weaken a little bit to a category three by tomorrow afternoon as it emerges into the Gulf of Mexico. However, conditions are favorable in the central and southern Gulf for further strengthening. So, not surprisingly, we're expecting it to be back up to a category four as we get into Thursday and especially Friday time frame. And then it's Friday into Saturday when we'd be looking at this kind of curve northward closer to the Louisiana coastline as a category three. Now the reason for a downgrade in the intensity here is cooler waters along the continental shelf closer to land and interaction with upper level wind flow. So some added wind shear. So hopefully that uh, helps weaken the storm a little bit before landfall. As for landfall, basically anywhere from Beaumont to about New Orleans, that's where we're anticipating this storm to go. And that would be Friday evening, Friday night time frame. And then the remnants of it move into the southeastern U.S. So I want to talk about the why. Here's a look at our steering flow. So you go through the middle part of the week, even into Thursday, it looks it's going to look like this storm is just making a beeline for the Texas coast. But what we're expecting to happen aloft up above us is this little dip, this little trough, or as I'm calling it here, a nudging low, this little trough to develop, and that should be just enough to start nudging that track eastward and start to steer it away from the Texas coastline. Of course, there's going to be some error associated with this, but right now that's what we're still anticipating from this. So despite it looking like it's heading right for Texas through the next couple of days, that nudging low is expected to develop and then nudge it eastward into the Louisiana area. And spaghetti models and computer plots are really showing a consensus here of that. But of course, that consensus can change over time. So we'll keep a close eye on it. Right now, I'm really not expecting any effects around here other than some showers along the coastline. Today, we started at 65, made it up to 89 for the high temperature, four degrees above average. Hello to now at 92. New Braunfels, 90. Tarpley 88 degrees, Hondo your 89, 94 Del Rio and Laredo. Those are the hot spots. Victoria, meanwhile, at 89. So tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., about 63 in San Antonio, 59 Fredericksburg, Catula 64. Then by the afternoon, up to 90 degrees. So it's really not going to look or feel any different than the past couple of days. We'll have a lot of sunshine, uh, light and variable breeze, hardly even noticeable, and that trend's going to continue till temperatures spike a little bit on Sunday. We could get into the mid-90s at that point, otherwise pretty uneventful around here.
Well, looking out for Delta. Thank you for the update. All right, so if you look at the schedule, it was a tough schedule to start for the Texans. So I'm wondering if Bill O'Brien thought he'd have more time. What well, probably so, but the big question was, was he surprised after the first four games to get the ax? When we come back, he will let us know. And could be somebody else on the hot seat in Dallas after Troy Aikman lashes out of the Dallas D. Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. For the second straight day, no positive tests have been returned in the Tennessee Titans organization. That's after as many as 20 players and staff members tested positive for the coronavirus over the last two weeks. It means they could be back in their facility tomorrow to prepare for the Bills in week five. Today, life begins after Bill O'Brien and the Houston Texans organization. That's after he was fired as both the head coach and general manager for starting the season 0-4. In a very classy move, O'Brien met with the media following his firing, was asked if he was surprised. I respected the decision, John. Um, you know, look, I know in this business, um, you know, when, when we when we lost to Minnesota, a game that we, you know, we had a chance to win, give Minnesota credit, they did a great job. But I, I you know, I knew that uh, something like this could happen. That's that's the business, you know. You, you start off like that, but I have tremendous respect. Cal Cal called me, and uh, we had a nice conversation, and you know, I, I thanked him for the opportunity, and uh, I told him uh, uh, they got a good team here, and they'll they'll turn it around. Romeo Cornell has been named the interim coach, beginning with the Jaguars this Sunday and NRG Stadium at noon. The next guy to lose his job could very well be Mike Nolan, the Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator, especially after a Hall of Fame quarterback Troy Aikman roasted the Dallas D for their performance in the 49-38 loss of Cleveland Browns. Speaking on Dallas radio today, Aitman called that performance embarrassing, giving up a club record 307 yards rushing, adding, I just didn't think the effort was there. Nolan disagrees. There's been no effort issues, in my opinion. I think the effort's been good. The, the, the issue that we had was more technique-wise, in my opinion. Uh, and when one technique breaks down for one player, obviously it, it affects another player next to him. And, uh, and we did not, you know, we didn't play very well, obviously. I'm not scared of the issue at all. We played very poorly. That's just... I mean, uh, I hope we don't have to live through another one of those. Um, but if we don't get things corrected, it could happen. That doesn't sound encouraging. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones confirmed today they looks like they've lost offensive lineman Leo Collins to season-ending hip surgery, and Joe Looney is out with a knee injury. The NBA Finals resume tonight as the Heat look to get even with the Lakers, trailing two games to one after their 115-104 win in Game 3. Bam Adebayo tweeting out today he believes he will play tonight. And that game is at Game 4 at 8 p.m. And Game 5 will be on Friday, also at 8 live, right here on KSAT 12. All right. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. We have a reminder, there's a flu shot drive this weekend. Our KSAT community partners are working with Bear County Precinct 2 Commissioner Justin Rodriguez to hold the drive this Saturday, October 10th. It's from 9 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon at Nelson Wolf Stadium. Registration is required. You can't just show up, so you, have to, you can find more information right now at ksatcommunity.com. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.